As a woman living in a city, do you feel safe, especially if you have to move out after sunset? Even if you are safe at work, is the ride back home dreadful or not? For God forbid, what if you are stalked? Do you trust the police force enough that the roads will be safe? And what about those who are at home and worry to death about you every time you are late? What should you do? How, how must you tackle specific situations? Is self-defense the only answer? These are some questions that we are asking today. Welcome to Gender Discourse. I'm Lottie Alaric. To carry this discussion forward, I have in the studio eminent panel of guests. It is my privilege to welcome Dr. Raji Lakshmi, who is a noted sociologist and teaches at the Delhi University. Sitting to her right is Ms. Poonam V. Jart, who is a Lok Sabha member of parliament from the BJP. And to my left is Suman Nalva, who is the additional DCP Delhi Police. So I take this opportunity of welcoming all three of you to the show. Well, friends, before we begin talking to our guests, let us all take a look at this report which talks about self-defense mechanisms for women. India is becoming increasingly unsafe for working women, traveling alone at night. In a globalized world where consideration of fixed working slot and hours has been out of sight, employee security has become a serious concern for some professionals, especially women. The BPO boom has also brought with it a set of disadvantages such as odd working hours. Employees, both male and female, are ferried to and from the office, often in the wee hours, without proper security arrangements. After a few incidents that occurred recently, security of women has become a matter of utmost significance to sectors like ITs and BPOs where a substantial number of employees are women who are required to work at odd hours. Is the law and order situation deteriorating fast as almost all major cities are unsafe in varying degrees? Experts feel that legal action can be kicked off against companies that do not provide proper security to its employees. Law articulates that the company is responsible for the safety and security of its employee once the person leaves for office in a company-provided vehicle till he or she returns home. How long will the families of these vulnerable women be on the tenterhooks and wait with crossed fingers for them to come home safely? These are some questions that need immediate answers. Definitely, these are some questions that do need definite answers and we will definitely show you a little report also on the self-defense mechanism, but all that will come after a little while. Well, to begin with, uh, Raj, let me begin with you. Now, uh, the NCRB report 2010 says that India is the fourth, fourth most dangerous country for women in the world. And this is exactly what we even saw in the report, that how parents especially are at tenterhooks when they are waiting for their daughters to come back home. So as a social analyst, how do you really analyze the situation that the, especially the women in cities are facing today. You know the situation uh, was bad earlier also but that time it was not reported. Mm -hmm. Nowadays uh, the whole thing is that it's been reported and it's been recognized that has added to a problem, mm -hmm. added to the problem mm -hmm. and people have started recognizing it so that also has made people aware that there is a danger in the city. Mm -hmm. Now that is one part. The other part is also that suddenly mm -hmm. India has, you know, let started this path of urbanization. Mm -hmm. In the sense mm -hmm. there have been a sudden growth, economic growth. Mm -hmm. Lot of in, there have been a lot of infrastructural development. Mm -hmm. This has created a gap between people in terms of their class in terms of their aspirations, in mm. terms of their, uh, you know, wants. Mm. So that has really widened so much between people that that has led to a lot of frustrations among those who are not able to acquire or those who are not able to see it. Mm. So there are many, many factors <coughs> which has led to all these things where right from the beginning women's body or women's lives are seen as a battleground to settle their scores. Mm. So all these frustrations, the first thing they do is to just pounce on a woman in whatever way they can, inside the home, outside the home. <coughs> That's right. Now, Purim, as a you know, representative of the people of the country, uh, how much does it worry you when you hear reports like these and in, on television or in the papers, how much does it worry you as a woman? 
बट नेचुरल आई एम वेरी मच वारिड बिकॉज इट इज लाइक राज लक्ष्मी सेट के in la uh, in the past also there were such incidents but they were never reported mm. with the media playing a very good out say a good role they, they are making people aware that such problems are there mm. and with urbanization also problems have increased in fact i would uh, like to say about my own self ke mm. when i come to delhi it's a big city and i come from gandhidham it's a small city in the a uh, state of gujarat right uh, gandhidham is a small city but when i come to delhi even you know i am not that sure after 8 o'clock i would also not like to go out mm -hmm. so that is the situation even i feel very insecure and when even people call up and tell me ki ma'am we'll send you a driver we'll send you a car you just mm -hmm. come and visit us but i don't think i feel that secure so i feel being a member of parliament if i'm not that secure and i'm afraid to go out in the night mm -hmm. at 8 then you feel you know how a common lady would be feeling like mm -hmm. that's right that's the difference right. so i, I feel you know things have to be changed and change for the better mm -hmm. of right. it right i think that's a very very loaded statement that she has just made uh, so someone so who are we to blame here how if a member of parliament is not feeling secure if she's a woman then uh, what to talk of the common man so what where are we going wrong uh see we can go for a blame game on you know a mm. lot of thing but we have to understand that what is the end result mm. if it's a government machinery we have to take that along okay. that's the only agency which is going to respond mm. of course we need the society to change we need the mindset to be changed and a lot of stuff but till then what mm. that is a government machinery which has to ensure that you know some safety is at place till the mindset and we have an ideal yeah, yeah, yeah. society at place yes. so that the crimes don't happen <coughs> but if you see even the most advanced uh, countries you look at america you look at uk crimes do happen because it's not an ideal society I, the absolutely. thing is what is the response to that what is the response mechanism which is at place mm. so that has to be good enough that has to in inspire confidence in a woman so that i can report mm. i can get justice and you know there's a perception of safety that if something happens to me there is a law in place which will help me seek justice mm. and this is one part the second is how i can take responsibility and avoid being a victim mm. it's like if i'm loaded with jewelry do i go out or mm. do i have some safety mechanisms with me Correct. because i don't want to be a victim mm. so do i have any safety mechanisms for that we come out with the precautions that a person can take mm. and of course uh, the burden often falls on a woman mm. that's right that's right. which should not mm. but it does because now we are not in an ideal society the response mechanism it continues to develop mm. and it continues to improve but i don't want to take a risk Hmm. So right so ranjit lakshmi do you want to add anything to that because i think she's very right when she says that there never ever will be an ideal society i think we have to accept that so which means that the approach definitely has to change i do agree with her on yes that one. definitely see uh, the mindset has to change hmm. we are the ones who make the society so i as a part of the society i need to understand hmm. that what exactly is wrong with me why do i do these kind of things why do i enter into being a criminal or why do i become a victim all these things are the question because i am the victim i am the one who is the penetrator i am the one who is imposing hmm. so all these things when i see myself which means i as a part of the society right i have to take the responsibility that is one two we have this you know what is very important is uh, to be gender sensitive in the sense hmm. that kind of an understanding should be there and this is something which is lacking and this kind of an education should be there both within the family and outside mm, so right. that is very very important we should be able to understand that you know these are the things which hamper a person's growth mm. the movement the way in which she interacts with others all these things play a very very important role because unless until she doesn't feel safe mm. she won't be able to participate mm. and that safety has to come both from within and from the outside mm -hmm. so the outside is of course the social societal mind which we all are the responsible for it which means right from the beginning we keep telling the girl is weak mm -hmm. she is not right. able That's to right. you know cope up she yeah. will not be able to cope up she cannot cope up these kind of things we start telling the child from the beginning That's itself right. That's so right. therefore what happens the girl goes out with you know feeling that she may not be able to mm -hmm. protect herself That's right. so therefore she keeps shrinking now mm -hmm. yeah, right the i think she sees others yeah. she you know is not able yeah. to true i think this is you just hit the nail on the head i think because gender sensitization 
organization is something that we have to do at those levels, at the smallest level, which is the unit of the family. And we really, it's time for us now to start bringing up our girls a little differently and also to bring up our boys differently. But right now, we'll slip into a break. When we come back, this is what we will talk about. So don't go too far, as we'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back. You're watching Gender Discourse, and today we are talking about safety of women in the cities. Well, gender sensitization, I think that is the key, and that's what Raja Lakshmi was trying to tell us before we went into the break. So, Poonam, uh, the question to you is also the same. So, do you also agree that it is time for us to bring up our sons and daughters a little differently than what we have been doing so far? Yeah, I think so, but uh, basically, if I talk about myself, uh, hmm. when I was a small girl, our parents were not that strict with us. Hmm. We were allowed to go out even uh, if we went for movies and all, we hmm. were allowed. But the scenario has changed now. Mm -hmm. I feel parents are more strict and uh, the kids are having an access to many things. Mm -hmm. Even the girls and the boys both. They, can, they have an access to the internet, they can see anything. Mm -hmm. So in fact all this is somewhere spoiling the society. But mm -hmm. as Lad Lakshmi said, ke, right from the beginning we can bring up our children and we can make our girls more confident. Mm -hmm. They should not be afraid if they are girls. They are girls. They have to. They have every right in the society, and they should be feeling more strong enough to go and face the society. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what I feel. Ki maybe for, right from the beginning, mm -hmm. we uh, bring those girls up like that. So maybe the things will change and they become more self-confident and mm -hmm. strong. Mm -hmm. Right. So, Sohan, do you also agree that uh, somewhere down the line, technology is becoming an impediment in the way our, especially the youth, is behaving? I would not say that. I think mm -hmm. technology is always good because it's opening up minds also. Right, right, right. It's bridging the gaps between mm -hmm. societies. <coughs> so I would not like. In fact, I would like to comment on uh, Poonam ji mm -hmm. about uh, the cultural differences mm -hmm. which are now and which were earlier. Mm -hmm. I would say parents are becoming paranoid. But there is a reason to it. Hmm. Earlier, if you look at the society, it was not that alienated. Hmm. Now we live in an alienated society. We don't know who our neighbor is. We hardly interact. Earlier, there was a sense of faith, you know. Hmm. If there is a child playing on the street, somebody is going to look after that true, child. True. Uh, a neighbor is going to look at hmm. it. The watchman will be there. Hmm. So there was uh, no question of that mistress. Hmm. Now in an alienated society, of course, because now we can't depend on our neighbors, we can't depend on the watchmen, mm -hmm. that's there. And another thing is, media has again played a role. I agree, there's a positive role that, you know, they are projecting, okay, if, mm -hmm. the, if the crime is happening. So, the government becomes more responsive. Mm -hmm. They come up with schemes, okay, you know, the lightning is not good, yeah. the subways are not good, and mm -hmm. we need to do something, basically, mm -hmm. because it's being reported. But what kind of reporting? Mm -hmm. Is it uh, bringing fear psychosis in the minds of the women who are working? What kind of, is it educative reporting or mm -hmm. is it voyeuristic? Mm -hmm. 
So, right. I mean, that makes a hell lot of a difference. Mm -hmm. And I would say technology is can be uh, best used as a prevention also. Mm -hmm. I was looking at one of the websites of Egypt where they, they have uh, this uh, chart, you know, where the mm -hmm. women can log. It's a Harris map. Okay. So, if a woman uh, is harassed anywhere, she can, you know, just report it and it's, you know, it flashes. So, in an area, if there are, suppose, 100 hits, you know, mm. there's a harassment going on. So, people know, you know, the that administration is a knows area. I have yes. to respond. Yes. So, it can be. Now, we have also come up on the web. Mm. Is it just to, you know, uh, we have opened our own uh, website and we are on Facebook, Special mm. Police Union for mm. Women and Children. So, it's that we can have a dialogue with the people we are uh, meant to be with. Mm. And it's with a younger crowd, which is on the Facebook mm. networking, Correct. you know, social and just as I was reading today, it says that uh, now the F people will be able to register their, you know, log their FIRs online. Yeah, you on, can't online. leave the technology behind. behind. In fact, True. you can make it educative. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, every it's like fire. It mm -hmm. can be used, it can yes, be misused. Right. Actually, when it was all invented, it was invented for all good. But then people, you know, they just wait, yes. make their way around. It's and like <laughs> nuclear energy. It can <laughs> yes. destroy and it can create. That's right. Okay, so Rajalakshmi, what would you like to say about this, you know, this upbringing factor and all these other technologies thrown in and everything. What do you think is the right way of going about this? I, first of all, I totally agree with what uh, Suman just said that, mm. you know, uh, society is becoming very, very individualistic. Mm. There is a whole sense of alienation. Neighbors are not worried what is happening. Mm. People, children don't come out to play. Even if they come to play, there's so much of sense of competitiveness. Mm. They don't want to interact in a positive manner. All these things are happening. Mm. Technology, has, of course, as she said mm. rightly, has got both positive and negative. Mm. The negative part, she talked about the positive, so I will highlight a little bit about the negative right. part. So the negative part is, of course, what is happening is that, you know, uh, the kind of jokes which are shared, the mm -hmm. kind of comments which are passed, it's sometimes, it's very open. Mm -hmm. Like Facebook also, the kind of comments, the kind of gestures which are, mm -hmm. you know, passed on from one to another That's is right. something which is very disturbing. Hmm. And the other thing is, you know, m media has opened up so much, there is hardly anything left for imagination. That's true. And people tend to understand, do everything and they know everything. Hmm. So they start looking for something new. Hmm. And what is new? New is something which they feel is crime. Hmm. And I was talking to a group of uh, students and this is what they said. You know, they, sometimes they are so bored, they feel like doing something, so break things. So, hmm. to, I mean, a larger extent of this is that you go and start misbehaving. That's right. Or you start, you know, imposing your physical strength because there is hardly anything to do. Hmm. So, media, of course, has a positive but negative also is quite a bit. Like hmm. in the sense, it has opened up too many avenues for students or children to interact. Hmm. Right. So, Purunji, what, what would you say? Like, if you were to compare, say, the state of Gujarat and Delhi with it, what kind of difference do you see between the two cities as far as safety of women is concerned? In fact, you know, I feel in Gujarat it's a far better place because it's a dry state. Mm. So people can't drink and go out and do anything. There might be some cases, but generally it is in, they hire some farmhouse or somewhere, mm. they have a party in that and generally they don't come out on the road. Mm. It's a very private affair. It's a very private affair yeah. and uh, even if somebody is drunk and uh, roaming on the road, the police will catch that person and mm. then put him in the jail. So laws are a little bit strong there. So mm. I think because of being a dry state, crime against women is less. Mm. And many times even in the city of Ahmedabad, I feel quite safe. If I even go out in, uh, at one in the night, I don't feel that kind of fear I feel in Delhi, okay. even at eight in the night. All right. So I think here, as we've been talking about always, you know, self-defense is something that the girls will also have to learn at some point of uh, yeah. in time or the other. Because if they can learn to dress the way they do or the kind of stills they want to wear, maybe it's time for them to learn that this is also a potential weapon that maybe they can use. Sure. So is there anything that the government or maybe the police is doing in this regard where there are some classes or some, uh, you know, some kind of... Uh, the the education that can be given to girls. Is there anything that's happening? Yeah, in Delhi Police we have been uh, doing this program uh, for past 10 years now mm -hmm. and we have already trained about 80,000 girls. We mm -hmm. have this program, continuous program in schools, colleges, mm -hmm. institutions and even organizations now corporates are also coming mm -hmm. uh, to mm -hmm. us to have this program. It's a 10 day program mm -hmm. where we teach them basic self-defense. Okay. And I mean, I would say that, you know, uh, first of all, we see, it, uh, you know, a subtle change, you know, the confidence level in a girl increases yeah. when she is throwing around her partner right. and, you know, mm. that gives a confidence. Next one is when you, you are interacting with a police officer, mm. a police woman, a police constable who is teaching you. Mm. So then you are more confident in approaching an authority if you are in a problem. Mm. So it's like, 
Mm. You know, there are laws. So mm. we have one section. It just tells you what you can do. Mm. You know, there are. Right. What are I the think laws? I just interrupt you for a moment because at this time I would like their viewers to see as to what the self-defense mechanism is all about. Take a look. Crime is on the rise, especially against women. Violence against women is an everyday occurrence. Protecting ourselves is very important to the point of being essential. It is never too late to learn to defend oneself from potential attack. Harassed in the streets, public transport, trains, shopping malls and even airports, it's time that Indian women gear up and react. What would you do if you are alone and being stalked by a stranger? Would you fling far away or would you use defensive skills and fight back? Self-defense art can help you protect yourself of any age from any attack, both physically and mentally. It is a skill every woman should acquire to make their own and others' lives safer on a daily basis or whenever the situation arises. It enables them to control of situations in which they may end up being a victim of verbal abuse, physical attack or other kinds of violence. These techniques also help in boosting confidence. Abhi isko seekhne ke baad mera jo confidence level hai wo boost ho gaya hai. Aur agar main pehle koi mujhe zor se chillata bhi tha to main dar jati thi bahut kaampne bhi lagti thi kabhi kabhi. Lekin ab agar koi mujhe kuch bolta bhi hai to I can reply. कराटे हमें सेल्फ डिफेंस के बारे में बताता है इसमें हम गोशिंदों सीखते हैं जो बिल्कुल सेल्फ डिफेंस है कराटे बहुत असेंशियल है लड़कियों के लिए स्पेशली क्योंकि फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल बहुत एक तो तुम्हें कॉन्फिडेंट बनाता है स्ट्रीट में जैसे कि आजकल के सिचुएशन है एज इट हेल्प टू डिफेंड आर सेल्फ इन स्ट्रीट और इन एनी सिचुएशन एवरी वन इज इंटाइटल टू बी सेफ एंड सेल्फ डिफेंस प्रोवाइड दीज टूल्स Self defense techniques must be taught to every individual at the school level itself that will go a long way in protecting women That's right. The confidence of women is there to be seen. And Suman, I think you were so right when you said that the whole perception towards life changes. And the thing is, you know, when they are coming from a background, you know, mm. where at home they are told you are a weaker sex, you know, don't fight with anyone, just come back if something mm. happens, if somebody is following you, don't go that mm. way, change your route. And yeah. suddenly they think they can respond to it. So mm. it's a, it's kind of a flowering, I would say. Yes. Of, yes. Uh, yes. Them. So right. So Raj, uh, what according to you, the government is doing and do you think is, that is enough or are there other schemes also lined up somewhere? No, the government is doing a lot in this. Uh, the, there are a lot of state mechanisms. Hmm. The, uh, you know, there, are, there is a police, then there is a central government, then there is a state government. Hmm. Then recently state government also launched a campaign called Awaz Uthau, hmm. where the basic idea is that people should take responsibility of their community and of themselves so that once they are aware of their community, they are able to identify what are the various uh, reasons why women feel unsafe mm -hmm. and they identify you know the uh, loopholes in their area mm -hmm. which makes women unsafe which are which is referred to as safety audits okay and then the community does that safety audit the community takes the responsibility of interacting with the uh, state machinery. Mm -hmm. That is one part. The state is doing its role mm -hmm. and it will be a long way before it achieves its target mm -hmm. because That's it's right. just, uh, That's right. you yeah. know, it's very difficult to change the mindset because it all depends upon the change of the mindset. Mm -hmm. These are all there. State is there, police is there, policing is there, law is there, everything is there. But unless and until we don't try to change our attitude, if mm -hmm. we don't try to understand our own responsibilities, we cannot achieve the target mm -hmm. or we cannot achieve anything. Mm -hmm. So that is very, very important that we should be able to understand. Mm -hmm. Right. So definitely, Poonam, you'll agree with the, all these ladies here. They're saying that there has to be some mechanism somewhere. But even today, even though the mechanisms are in place, we don't really see women or girls really coming up and reporting. Maybe because of the shame attached to it and the stigma attached to it. So how do you think we can change the mindset now what Raj Lakshmi is talking about? But naturally, I even feel like, you know, a lot of change has to be brought in the society. The mindset has to be changed because first you see, uh, if you become a victim, mm -hmm. it's a big shame. Mm -hmm. You're, 
you know, the crime has done by somebody, somebody else. else. But uh, you are seen as you have done that mm. crime. That sure. is a very wrong attitude. Mm. Many times, even after being raped, girls don't report. Why? Mm. They know, okay, once they go to the police station, they might be asked uh, some d dirty questions right. by which they might not be able to answer. Mm. And even the procedure goes on till the court. Mm. So they are not sure, okay, they will get justice after that even. That's right. But then... Uh, uh, taboo will be there with them, nobody will marry them, mm -hmm. even the society will not have an interaction with them, everybody will, they will be ending up as being the criminals. Mm -hmm. That's right. I, I think this, I say that the mindset, mindset has, to, has to be changed. Absolutely. Because Yes, yes, that is, that is absolutely, I agree with you, both of you over there, that yes, the mindset definitely have to be changed and they have to start right from that smallest unit of uh, the, the, the society, which is the family. Well, we'll talk about this a little more in detail, but right now we'll have to skip into this other break. But do come back quickly as we'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back. This is Gender Discourse and today we are talking about safety of women in the cities. Well, when we talk about the mindset of people, I think what will also be of importance here is that some people think, Suman, that uh, girls sometimes just invite trouble, you know, by wearing the kind of clothes that they do, and maybe those same clothes may not be appropriate in every place. So do you think as a policewoman that, yes, this is something that should be made, you know, uh, a little more attention needs to be paid in this regard? As I had said earlier, it is like, you know, you don't want to be a victim, so how can you, what precautions you can take? to avoid being a victim. So if I'm in, uh, I'm in a very advanced society, you know, if I'm in a disc, mm -hmm. I won't be wearing a sari. True. Because I have gone there to enjoy myself mm -hmm. and have a, uh, to dance. Mm -hmm. If I'm uh, going for a swim, I'm not going to wear a salwar kameej and swim. True. So I'm going to wear a swimming suit. Mm -hmm. So of course, appropriateness has to be there. Mm -hmm. If I'm going on a beach, I'm not going to, you know, mm -hmm. go in a sari. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be beach, uh, beach specific right. uh, beach right. wear. So I mean, of course, uh, that does matter and when we come to Delhi again we have a uh, migrant population mm -hmm. on the daily basis we have about 200,000 people who are immigrants who are not mm -hmm. staying in the city mm -hmm. and they are coming from all over India we have from villages we have you know for them it's a cultural shock cultural shock right. and they don't know how to respond so that's why they respond inappropriately and then if you're traveling in a public transport system which is like you know uh, bulging on its box, back yeah, sardines, yeah. Yes. and then, I mean, then you can't avoid it, mm -hmm. and you don't want to complain it because when the survey was being done by one of the NGOs, mm -hmm. so I mean, women thought, you know, the whole criminal justice procedure it is so long. If somebody has, you mm -hmm. know, sexually harassed them, mm -hmm. they don't want to report because the whole procedure it might mm -hmm. take Just years. As Poonam said, yes. So it will take. Yes. So if you don't want to report, you know, there will be a hassle of, uh, you know, going through the whole system. Mm -hmm. So. What can I do to avoid it? Mm -hmm. It can be to dress appropriately. If I'm traveling in a public transport system, I would better wear jeans where I can fight back. Mm -hmm. yeah, otherwise, all these defense mechanisms of classes course, that one has taken will go futile. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, that's being smart. I would yeah. say that's being smart. Right. If I'm traveling late in the night, mm -hmm. I would, you know, rather wear sneakers, you know, where mm -hmm. if need be, I can run. Can run. That's true. Well, I think so, Raj, this is just common sense, you know, which probably the girls have to learn to use. At least uh, that, that's what I believe. Do, do, do you believe in that or do you want to counter it? No, no, I totally believe in what she's saying is that, yes, we need to be appropriately dressed up because, unfortunately, uh, it is always the victim who is blamed. As Poonamji mm -hmm. just said that, you know, it's the women who is to be blamed. So it starts with her behavior. It starts mm -hmm. with her dress. It starts with the way that, you know, uh, why was she going alone in the night? And mm -hmm. all these kind of things do, uh, you know, come in open or in these things and then you know they say that if she was there why was she was there in that particular place mm -hmm. where the crime was crime happened and all so I do agree totally that yes one should dress up appropriately obviously you should know what you are doing 
you should be able to take the responsibility and just not start blaming that the you know, state is not doing this, the police is not doing that all. So all these things, again I go back to the same thing, again I repeat myself, that socialization is very, very important. You should be able to understand and, you know, believe that what is right, where. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's it. So it is not the question of blaming. A lot of people would come up and say that no, why the girls have don't do have don't no, have do right not, to uh, yes. you know do wear they what right they want to do. Yes. yes, they do have a right to wear what they want. Hmm. But at the same time, it is also.